In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a custom knowledge check that you build once and can reuse many times across many different courses. So I had a client reach out to me with regards to this video up here and the knowledge check slide, which could also be used as a final quiz question slide. Um, and they were trying to implement something similar in their own project. And what it made me start to think was that, of course, the original project was designed with that specific client in mind and some very specific needs. But I got thinking, is there a way to make a nice, easy, uh, shared action interaction that would be easy to build once and um, also easy to replicate once you had a single copy of that. So that's what we're going to cover today. Uh, incidentally, by the way, if you are a paid member of my YouTube channel at the free downloads level or higher, you can download this project file and do with it as you see fit. So first of all, we have an opening slide here uh, with a video where we're going to learn something about the cities in Spain. Then we're going to be brought to our knowledge check slide here. Now, right now, all that we have here is a text caption. We have four shapes used as buttons. Each case here, we've got Madrid, Seville, Barcelona, Malaga. They're just simply labeled answer A, answer B, answer C, answer D. And uh, I've removed the rollover and the down states, and I just created my own custom state called selected. There is also this feedback item here, and this is also a shape with, with multi-states within it. And there's a state for correct, where we confirm, yes, Madrid is the capital of Spain. Press continue or click continue to proceed. And then there's also an incorrect state as well. And the message there will be incorrect. Click review to check again, because essentially we want to build in uh, an opportunity for learners to go back and find the answer to this question from the video that they should have been paying attention to in the first place. And then, of course, uh, if you can press continue, which will only display if you get the correct answer, you'll go on and learn some specifics about Barcelona through a video that we have here. So how do we set this up? Well, the first thing we need is we need an on enter shared action. And in the case of shared actions, you always need to start with a regular advanced action. And this is going to be a very simple uh, on enter action or shared action. And we'll just call it on enter. And we're simply going to enable our four buttons because one of the things that we're going to do later is disable them. So each time we arrive on this slide, we need to make sure that those buttons are clickable. So enable all of those. I'm going to save this as a regular advanced action first. The reason being is if I need to refer back to the original uh, advanced action, I can do so. I'm going to click OK. But now we're going to save it as a shared action. And I'm just going to pr uh, provide Captivate with a description of what each of these parameters is. So answer A, answer B, answer C, and answer D. Go ahead and hit save, press OK, and press close. So on enter of this slide, we're going to execute that shared action. Let's make sure our parameters are filled in. So answer A, answer B, answer C, answer D, hit save, and we're done with the on enter part. Now we're going to write an advanced action for each of the button presses. And we're going to do it as a single advanced action, save it as a shared action, and apply it to each button. So let's go to Project, Advanced Actions, and we'll call this Button Press. And let's assume we're working with answer A, which is the correct answer. But this will be applicable. The same shared action will work for our incorrect answers as well. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the appearance of the button that we're pressing. So we're going to use the action 
change state of. Answer A is the one we're working with right now and we'll make it selected. We're also going to change the state of our feedback caption to represent either correct or incorrect. In this example, we'll choose correct. Now we're going to disable those four buttons. So we'll hit disable, answer A, answer B, C, and D. Last but not least, we're going to show one of the two navigation buttons. Now, technically the review button will already be visible, but I need to show any kind of navigation button in this case so that I can definitely take care of when it's a correct answer and we wish to show the next button. So we'll go show. And in this example, we are working with the correct answer. So slide two next is the one we want to show in this case here. So I'm going to save this as a regular advanced action. That works fine. And the, again, just in case I need to look at what I did before, because you can't edit a shared action once it's a shared action. So we'll click on save as a shared action. And we just need a description for each of our parameters. So this is the button being pressed, the selected state of that button, feedback, the state selected for feedback, other answer, other answer, and other answer, and navigation button. Again, it could be review, it could be the next slide button there. So once you have this all filled out, click on save, click OK, and we can go ahead and close the advanced action window. Now let's apply that shared action to each of our answer buttons here. So under actions, we're going to select execute shared action, click the parameters icon, and we just need to fill in these drop down selectors. So in this case, the button being pressed is answer A. The selected state of that button is selected. The feedback caption is called feedback caption. The state for that in this case is correct because Madrid is the right answer. The other answers are answer B, answer C, answer D. And because this is the correct answer, we're going to show the slide to next button. Okay, so we'll hit save, but now we'll apply the same shared action, even though these three are incorrect, to these buttons here. So execute shared actions. Let's click the parameters icon. In this case, uh, we've actually jumped ahead. This is answer C, so we'll select that. And the selected state for that is selected. Feedback caption, in this case incorrect now. The other answers are answer A, answer B, and answer D. And because this is incorrect, we're going to show the review button. Again, a little bit redundant, but don't worry about it. It'll work perfectly fine. Press save, and we'll do the same thing for Barcelona. One more to go. And I think we're good to go here. Let's preview this in HTML5. So here's where we learn a little bit about the cities in Spain. Let's click continue. And now we have our knowledge check. Which is the capital city of Spain? We'll click on Seville. Oh, that's incorrect. Let's hit review uh, and check again here. We watch the video again, maybe paying a little bit more attention this time. Uh, now that we've received our remediation, we can hit continue. And of course, we know that the city uh, that we're looking for in this case is Madrid. We get the correct caption. And of course, we can continue and learn something about Barcelona now. So the best part about this particular interaction is that once you build it once, you can reuse this interaction in literally seconds. 
So here's an example of the very same slide with all the shared actions applied. If I was to right click on this slide, copy it, create a new Adobe Captivate project, and paste this very same slide in, guess what? If I preview this in HTML5, everything works. And the best part is not only can I have it work a single time, I could paste multiple copies of this slide into new projects. Then all I need to do is change the text in the question stem and the answers. If I wish to change the correct answer to a different position, I just need to move the individual objects around so that everything has a new position and it will work perfectly fine every single time. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.